the Imperial Palace, the greatest location in all of Warhammer. Except, it's missing something. You guys have been desperate for this since basically the first video, and it's finally time. In the last two months, we've made some huge progress on this board, but by the end of this video, Massive doesn't even cover it. We've got heaps of battlement detail to add, a whole new trench system, more details for the Undercity, and a brand new level of the Upper City that might not even fit in this damn workshop. But before all of that, as a thank you to you guys for how much you've been supporting this project, it's time to see the Imperial Palace with some models on it. So obviously these are not epic scale titans. These are my Horus Heresy babies, the Mortis Maxor and the Cascadus Killstroke. But it is fun to slap them down on the table and I don't have any of my epic scale armies here because I gave them all away to some mates to paint them up for our Siege of Terror game. So while I work on the board, this is what I've got to show you. But at, the, at this size, they're kind of the scale of what an Imperator class titan would be at epic scales. And maybe building one of those is a video for the future. But seeing these two titans battling over this landscape and their massive guns and armaments has given me a slightly heretical idea. We're gonna scrap them for parts. Now when my mate Dan from Full Scaled Conflict built these two titans for me, he not only did this insane paint job on the Mortis Maxor, and that is not a transfer guys, those flames are painted on, but he also magnetized all of the weapon mounts. And as these titans can't be used with this board while we're playing at epic scale, I thought what better way to try and increase the firepower of the palace walls than to borrow a bunch of mega guns as we build the new battlements and defenses on the different levels of the upper city. Don't they look insanely cute without their big guns? Look, he's like a kind of big turtle thing. Hello! In fact, this whole journey actually began when one of my amazing Megazort Patreons, Richard Price, sent me over an absolute beast of a contribution for the palace walls. A fellow Titan lover like myself, he's been working on a Warbringer Titan recently, but Forgeworld accidentally sent him out the wrong gun. And when they sent him a replacement and let him keep the first one, he decided there was no better place for an absolutely massive volcano cannon than the Imperial Palace on Terra. And you know what, Richo, you absolute legend? You're absolutely right. So what if I told you not only would you be given a free legendary hero and two strong epic heroes, you can also win a free gaming console. And if that's not enough, there will be Amazon gift cards with a total value of $10,000. And what do you have to do to win? Simple. Raid Shadow Legends are celebrating the arrival of spring in Teleria with a special spring hunt minigame. Players will need to find hidden items around the Mistwood. Simply download Raid using my link in the description, head to springhunt.plarium.com and enter your raid ID and start searching for missing items and you could win real life prizes like a gaming console or Amazon gift cards. The heart of the game is its players and Raid Shadow Legends are celebrating exactly that with a special event called Community Weeks and trust me, you want to be involved. Everyone can get their hands on a free legendary champion, Chronicler Adelin. She's a top tier support who can put an enemy to sleep without even hitting them. To get Adelin, just log in for 7 days between April 11th and July 8th. So if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses available only through my link. You'll immediately get a huge starter pack with an epic champion, Tariel, and you'll get another starter pack after reaching level 25 that includes an epic wrecked or drath. Don't forget, all these champions are available after downloading via my custom link, or you can use my QR code. Come and find me under the name Zorbazorp, join my clan Zorptrons, and we'll be legends together. So hit my link in the description, and I'll see you on the battlefield. After cleaning and washing the Forge World resin for the Nemesis Volcano Cannon, and doing a little bit of hot water dipping to straighten out a few warped parts, I assembled it with a heap of thick cyanoacrylate superglue. I didn't actually use any pinning, as the kit has a bunch of really nice 
joins, and this glue is just fantastic. I mounted some glorious magnets from the magnetbaron.com so that the cannon could pan up and down either to cover the ground in front of the palace walls or even aim high up into the atmosphere. Working with massive resin pieces like this can be a bit of a challenge, but the glorious detail is pretty stunning, although mounting these massive titan weapons to the walls could be tricky as they are so damn heavy. I grabbed all my remaining pieces of epic scale scenery and cut out every single wall piece left on the frames, which was basically just the smallest size of low walls, which I'd left behind so that I could create some awesome battlements. Now before I use these pieces to build my battlements like we did on the last gatehouse, I need to perfectly ration the last of my plastic pieces across the whole palace walls, which is difficult because they aren't finished yet. So it's time to finally join our two glorious gatehouses together into one cohesive battlement of Imperial Supremacy. But in true Loki style, I'm making it massively overcomplicated, but by the Emperor, it is going to be absolutely amazing for gameplay. The idea is to have a third trench that cuts back from the corner of our two existing trenches that will not only create some wonderful access for players to stand in the middle of the board and be able to reach everything, but also create a heap more space up behind the battlements for an entire new area to game on. I started by knocking up two large triangular footprints to define the shape of the trench and the new upper battlement regions, and then fully textured the side panels for the upper trench walls and glued those in place on the right side, and then grabbed the top panel of the new structure and carved in some nice tiling to fit nicely with the stonework aesthetic of the palace straight into the foam sheet, as I don't have enough plastic Games Workshop tiling to floor tile this region and then I glued that into place. With the first side looking promising, I made a perfect mirror for the left side of the trench and slid that into place and already look at the amazing amount of real estate we have just added up behind the city walls. Obviously, there is going to be a hectic bridge joining these walls, spanning the trench, but first we need to finish the lower trench walls, which required just a beast amount of panel texturing, mirroring the same stonework that you guys have seen on the other the trenches so that it all lined up nicely and then of course knife work, pencils and smashing the crap out of it with Bricky which was actually done by my new Mechanicum Servitor. That's so good. I glued up the left side skirt and the real trick here is a technique we used to use in the film industry when making large format polystyrene set dressings. Basically, just skewer the crap out of it with massive skewers and then once the glue is dry, I'll snip those back and hide them with filler and paint. Then with the chamfered bevel trim, suddenly this trench doesn't look like foam sheets, it looks like actual walls. Now before we do the battlements and the titan guns, we need to do the bridge, but before we can do the bridge, we need to make sure that everything is sitting properly square and flush, which means we actually have to jump back over to the ruined city sector and finish the lower trench here with a little patching piece to cover up this gap where I kind of messed up some measurements. Now fixing errors like this is always just an opportunity to create more sexy details, and I actually love this part of the trench even more now. To ensure the pieces are sitting flush and straight before adding the final bridge that joins all of these pieces, we need all our bridges that are crossing this trench in place. We built the top piece of the main bridge in the last video, and that still needs a bridge column support and some detailing, but more urgently, it was time for our lower bridge in this trench to link up with the lower bridge in our other trench, and of course, our elevator tower in the upper city. I just fell in love with the idea of creating some really awesome some combat space in the lower city. Imagine like a crossfire across the trench chasms as units are both running towards the elevator and even jump troops leaping between the bridges. I think it's gonna be great for gameplay. I use more plastic floor tiles, trimming them down to the roadway and the gutter trim, but cut an angle at the end joining the main wall to create more space for that gameplay. And then with heaps of foam trim and detailing, we have an awesome little shape with a fantastic column pillar support that matches the architectural style of the pillar support under the main bridge in this trench and in the first trench, 
And this is just the beginning of all the detailing that we still need to do in this second trench. Obviously, there's the doorways for this walkway and lots of foam trim, but I, I've currently run out of the Sector Imperialis archways and I want to keep that consistent. So for now, I'm just going to leave that, but that piece does lock our trench together. So we finally got the proper positioning for our walls, which means we can make the coolest bridge so far. So one of the most important features of this part of the build is it opens up the whole landscape for gameplay. I can basically reach everywhere from in here, but now we're going to move on to probably the most important part of the entire build. Not only are we whacking a bridge across here, which is going to open up this whole back area for continuous gameplay, that bridge is going to be the lower level of a massive tower that rises up from the new trench and up into this huge three meter mega bastion overlooking the entire board. The bridge started out with a simple sheet of unskinned XPS foam, which I then cut down to size to perfectly span our third trench, and then set about texturing a nice brickwork pattern straight into that foam sheet. No more road tiles up here, and just like the upper platforms, it looks pretty nice anyway. Then it was time to break out the big boys, some massive chunks of 70mm XPS, which is going to form the bulk of our structural bridge and bastion supports. I cut four pillars first up and then scored them with a really large brick size. I remember this passage from the first or second Siege of Terror book describing the massive mason guilds craning up these absolutely monstrous slabs of stone to build the palace, and I've really loved using large stonework across this build. They all got double textured from my L foil and then Bricky, who you guys will have noticed is a new addition to the Zorbazorb team. And he is just amazing at working texture into this 70 millimeter thick sheet. It creates some really awesome details and patterns, which I think is really important for such big, large stonework. Then I glued the four pillars in place and I'm building this whole kind of tower support in such a way that the supports will come apart nicely with the modular trench. That upper level and the lower skirt are separate. So these four pillars go down to the top of the lower skirt and then come up above the bridge to be the foundation of the tower supports. Then below them, I glued in some nicely tapered supports to kind of blend that form back into the trench, but these wedges are only glued to the wall, not to the pillar above, so I'll be able to pack down this whole setup easily for transport. Up next, it was the beginning of our structural dressing for the bridge itself with some nice classic gothic arches. And now I want to emphasize here, we're not going sort of full gothic. This is the palace during the Horus Heresy, not set during 40K. So we aren't into that full Baroque gothic architectural stylings yet. But as we see in the kind of gorgeous Siege of Terror reference art from Neil Roberts, these types of forms do exist in the palace even this early. Some nice beveled edges on the stonework and an interesting kind of stone pattern. And boy, this bridge is coming along nicely. So I am absolutely loving this. The pylons, the shape of the bridge. Look, I can fit underneath, so woohoo! I can get here in the middle, but unfortunately, I have run out of my thick sheets of foam, so I can't keep building up to get that upper bastion, but because this is all one continuous area now, we can start to work on the battlements. To begin our battlement journey and finally get ready to mount some big ass Titan guns, I pulled the whole beast of a layout apart, and here you go guys can see how I've managed to keep it modular, which is going to be really fun to experiment with for different layout options in the future, and of course makes it great for transporting over to Christchurch for our big Siege of Terror event, but most importantly, it makes it so much easier to prime with the spray gun. Now I finally worked out after building the two massive gatehouses, it's really handy to slap down the spray gun prime on the foam before adding the plastic detail, as the spray gun doesn't work well on the plastic, which I can then prime later with rattle cans and now I don't have to fear melting the foam. Of course, we've also banished all that bright orange foam, which is mega satisfying. So in the last video, I asked you guys if you wanted to see more Imperial Palace or the Middle Earth Mega Board, and you answered resoundingly with the Imperial Palace, but a lot of you made the point that it might be really nice for me to change up projects to maximize motivation. And that is absolutely spot on. It's often one of the reasons why I've changed from project 
to project over the years. And also, back-to-back -back videos on the same thing don't usually work. The views will fall away, and I have to change things up to keep folks interested. But something about this new premise, this new format that we've developed together, you guys are just coming back for more and more Imperial Palace. So I'm going to let you guys keep guiding me. So comment down below, Imperial Palace or Middle Earth, and help me choose what video I work on next. But in the meantime, I'm actually going to work on both. So the new shelves that the Patreons bought me in our last video are actually big enough to do a pretty reasonably set up layer of Minas Tirith. And then over here, I've got a secondary workbench with some new lighting so that when my motivation runs dry on whatever my main project is, I can do a few hours or even a few days on a different project. This will not only increase efficiency, which means that you guys are going to get more content. When we do return to Minas Tirith, the board is going to be already well underway. So Middle Earth fans, your next video is going to be truly massive. So here's a little sneak peek for the Middle Earth fans, just a little tease. And if you want even more almost daily updates across both projects, I am constantly spamming the Patreon Discord with work in progress photos. So go and check out Patreon link down in the description below, or you can become a channel member or super thanks right here on YouTube and help keep Zorpa Zorp alive. A massive thank you to everyone who's rallied behind us these past few months. I mean, look, we're, we're still digging ourselves out big time, but the last Last few videos are actually working. So let's keep this train rolling, get in that comment section and let me know, Minas Tirith or Imperial Palace. Right, let's get back to the build. So finally, a bit of spice for our battlements. I grabbed all of our pieces we clipped off, the last of our short walls, and knocked up a couple of battlement features, mixing some small and large wall pieces to match the upper battlement above the first gatehouse, and then had a rummage for some armor plating and slapped them all down above the second gate. Just like our other battlements, I glued these in place, hanging forward over the edge, and glued down a second line of the low plastic civitas walls to create some angled machicolations or firing ports looking down at the trench below. Then a little few foam details to blend the pieces nicely into the gatehouse and one final plastic armor plate to make the whole battlement one cohesive piece. And we will add some more guns up here soon. Then I grabbed my four big titan pieces. The missile launcher is the simplest. He actually perfectly mounts straight down into the Baneblade turret chassis. Just like this one I built into the first gatehouse tower and I think I'll actually leave him there and reuse that top turret somewhere else as I'd like a little bit more titan weapon firepower over this gate and then for the big boy the nemesis volcano cannon I'm gonna need to build a custom mounting frame and I want this to still be able to have the full articulation of this awesome piece which makes building this a little tricky I ended up crafting a custom circular foam plinth with a cutaway at the rear and then textured that with brickwork and glued the cannon permanently to that structure. Then I used four foam buttresses to create that really classic turret look we see all the time in Warhammer and mounted those buttresses to the top of the new gatehouse and all glued up. I'm loving how that's looking. It all moves nicely, but it is going to need a lot more detail work, but that structure is really solid for now. For the two laser turrets, I had a little help from an awesome care package from Neil Kirkley who sent me a bunch of bits all the way from the UK, big thanks to Neil. And this reactor scenery piece is going to be an amazing foundation for my two turret mounts. I used the two halves of the piece on their sides as the base of that turret and built a front kind of plasteel battlement, hanging that curved battlement down over the foam walls, which really helps integrate the plastic and foam components together. And then added some pipes and details and my goodness, there is just some serious work left to be done. But for the first time in this entire build journey, really, I feel like the shape of the final board is starting to appear. Yes, there's a massive tower bastion still to come, another wall on each side of our two gates, and heaps of detailing on the trenches and battlement and upper city detail. But my beloved Zorptrons, we are getting so damn close. This was a tough video to make. I'm trying to get a video every two weeks exactly for you guys. I really think I owe you that much, but there was just so much labor intensive carving on this build. I'm worried that this video isn't gonna give you guys as much of that kind of completionist buzz as the last two, but I do hope you enjoy it and stay with me because the next episode is going to be a banger. Remember to comment below if you want me to smash the pain barrier with more Imperial Palace or jump back to Middle Earth. 
And don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion.